All right. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And on behalf of Lieutenant Governor uh, Kim Driscoll and myself, we want to welcome everybody to the hall today. We're so excited for this event. We want to welcome you to what will be the first of many events as we celebrate Veterans Week here in the Commonwealth. Today, we're swearing in members of the newly established Governor's Advisory Council on Veterans Services and Governor's Advisory Committee on Women Veterans. I want to begin by thanking all of our veterans who are here with us today. We thank you for your service to our country, and we thank you for our service to our communities and this Commonwealth. Thank you also to family members who are here. We know that a service member's sacrifice is more often than not a whole family commitment, and we appreciate and acknowledge you as well. We also want to recognize our legislative leaders who are here joining us, all champions for veterans. When Secretary Santiago takes to the podium, he will uh, read everyone's name. I know we have people coming and going, but I just want to give special note to Senate President Karen Spilka, who will be joining us, along with our chairs of the Committee on Veterans and, veterans and Federal Affairs, Senator John Vilas and Representative Jerry Cassidy. Thank you. Uh, We also, we also have with us here this morning Boston City Council President Flynn and many members of the legislature who will be acknowledged, as I, as I say. Uh, one in particular I see just entered. Uh, she goes by Senator, but we, uh, we like to think of her right now as First Lieutenant uh, Lydia Edwards of the Army National Guard, just, just sworn in last week. <laughs> Thank you also to the veterans advocates, veterans organizations, and service providers who are represented here today. And as I say, I want to welcome um, you all here on behalf of myself and our fabulous Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, who is uh, a Navy family through and through, and joins with me and um, has a huge heart, we know, for, for our veterans. And of course, our outstanding Secretary of Veterans Services, uh, John Santiago, a major in the U.S. Army Reserve. Thank you, Secretary Santiago, for the, thank you for the outstanding work that you and your team, your staff, have done over the last year. As you know, this was a new cabinet position. Grateful to the legislature for making that happen, and you have just done a fantastic job. And we are grateful for all of your hard work and the work of your team. That includes launching an exhibit today called The Many Faces of Veterans. It's on display right here next to us in Memorial Hall, and it highlights the wonderful diversity and incredible contributions Massachusetts veterans have made to our state and to this country. We have truly made veterans a priority in this administration. It's personal for so many of us. It's a collective moral responsibility and duty we owe to support and honor those who sacrifice on our behalf. If we want to support families and seniors, we have to make sure that veterans have access to all the benefits they deserve. If we want to have strong communities, we have to support our veterans who provide so much leadership in local government in our schools, in law enforcement, and in business. If we want to protect our democracy, we have to honor our veterans. They have lived the sacrifice it takes to keep our system going. Their service is at the core of who we are as a state. We are Massachusetts, home to the first National Guard and military units, birthplace of the American Revolution, first in freedom and civil rights, we should have the best veteran services in the nation, bar none, and that is our goal. That's why one of the very first things we did this year was to implement the restructuring enacted by the legislature earlier this year. We elevated veteran services to the cabinet level and appointed Secretary Santiago. We made sure that he and his team are not just named, but are empowered, empowered to get after it every day on behalf of veterans, service members, and their families. And that's what we've been doing. From access to family benefits, no matter what kind of family you have, to job training, career supports, housing, health care, 
our veterans' homes in Holyoke and Chelsea. We're making sure that every phase of a veteran's life is taken care of, that they can find support from state government and our partners. At the same time, we know that right policies don't necessarily originate in government offices. And we've been out across the state listening to veterans, guided by their input and their values. That's why Secretary Santiago has put such a value on engagement. And that's why in May, I signed an executive order to reestablish and reaffirm the governor's advisory on veterans' services. The order. The order affirms that the council will also include the chair of the Committee on, Veter on Women Veterans, whose members are here with us today. And it is my understanding that the council and committee haven't been sworn in together, at least not in a number of years. And so it's an exciting day for all of us. The new members of these bodies are here with us today to officially start their service, and we are grateful. They represent veterans from across the state, in every region, in every type of community. They reflect the diversity, not just of our state, but of our veteran community. The council will advise us on the issues that impact veterans. And the committee will put a special focus on women's veterans whose unique needs have been overlooked for too long. Collectively, you all will help put us in the best position to succeed, succeed by delivering for veterans across this state. Saturday will be Veterans Day, and we'll have events happening all week long, including some exciting new announcements on the way. But truly, we know that the real work has to and should happen for veterans every single day, every single week of the year. I want to thank you again for all who've stepped forward to once again answer the call and serve, and it is now my honor to introduce our state's Secretary of Veterans Services, someone who is transforming the way we serve our veterans, Dr. Major Secretary John Santiago. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. It's so great to be here. And I can tell you, as a veteran, I am particularly proud about Saturday, about this week, and about the number of events we have scheduled throughout this week, many of which you will be participating in. But today is about these folks behind me. Eight months ago, this secretariat was created. It's a big task at hand, lots to do, things to start up, things to turn around things to get active with. And for my staff who knows me well now, I'm always telling them I know what I don't know. Right? And these folks up here, whether it's Matt Seto in the Chinese American Community Council at Flynn, Sandra Whitley in the faith-based communities, these folks can provide the gaps of knowledge, the experience, dedication that we're going to need to support our veteran communities all across the Commonwealth. So I'm so grateful that they're here today to stand with us in government to make sure that Massachusetts will continue to lead the country when it comes to veteran services. Because right now we have a governor, Governor Healy and an LG, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, who are leading the way. This is the most the administration, the administrative office of governor has ever invested in veteran services. They are committed to you, they're committed to your families, and we're looking forward to not just a few announcements in the course of the next couple of days, but over the next couple of months and years, as we look to reform, strengthen, and broaden our efforts across the community in each and every city and town across the Commonwealth. One thing I'm particularly proud of in this new executive order is the diversity. For years and decades, there are communities who have not been as represented as they should have been throughout our country's history. Today, we start to change that. Right? There are folks on this stairwell, different backgrounds, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, who are committed to representing the many faces of veterans. So I'm excited to be here, not just as a secretary, but as a veteran, 
and someone who's committed, in to, committed to doing the work with each and every one of you. So thank you for the time. And let me just introduce someone, our Senate President, Karen Spilka here. There are a few people in this entire building are, or are steadfastly committed to supporting veterans on homelessness, on mental health issues, than our Senate President right here. I wanna thank you for what you've done throughout your career. Last week, we had a few minutes to sit down and learn a little bit about our own stories and share those, and we have a lot in common. And I would just guess that she has a lot in common with a lot of you military families out there. So I'm excited to partner with you and with the legislature. And let me just announce a couple of names here because I see a lot of them in, in, in the audience today and they deserve to be mentioned for all the work that they do day in, day out. Rep. DeCoste, Rep. Beal, Rep. Dubois, Rep. Lenatra, Rep. Cassidy, Rep. Mendez, Senator Edwards, Senator Rush, Rep. McGregor, Rep. X, there he is right there, Xaros, Senator Vilas, Senator Brady, Rep. Ayers, and Rep. Cabral. Let's give them a round of applause because Hendricks. Rep. Hendricks. Rep. 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 Ayers. Because government is the ultimate team game. When you have an administration pushing forth an effort, when you have your legislative colleagues backing you, that's when real difference can occur. So I'm excited to call them partners, mentors, teammates in this game to support our veteran community. So thank you for all for being here. Let me just welcome Senate President Karen Spilka to the microphone. Good afternoon. And I'm so pleased to look out and see so many of you here today. Governor Healy, this is quite the impressive group that you have assembled, seriously. <laughs> Dr. Major Secretary Santiago, <laughs> it's a mouthful. But seriously, this is a tremendous group. The diversity, the knowledge, the background will make our Commonwealth stronger, not only for veterans, but for every single resident in the Commonwealth. So thank you, thank you. Um, he talked a little bit about you know, his background and his, his titles, but uh, one word that he did not add to that was caring. Uh, he's got a big heart, and I think it comes through with all that he does and with this assembly and working uh, with the governor, the lieutenant governor, in ensuring that we take care of our veterans and their families as best as we can. Um, thank you for your diligence in selecting the members who represent such a diverse background and diverse experiences. So um, we want to make sure that we do everything. We understand how difficult. My father was a veteran, World War II veteran. He had tough times, uh, in fact. Uh, came back from the war with what probably a lot of people during those years would refer to as shell shock, uh, major uh, mental health issues. And unfortunately, there weren't the services that were readily available. These are things that we in Massachusetts are trying to remedy. We realize we need to work with the federal government in, in taking care of or supplementing services, but I believe we have one of the best networks of services and care for our veterans, with our veterans agents, with our veteran uh, folks who are working hard to help uh, veterans and, and support all who have fought and served our country. But I want to thank the appointees. I want to give my personal thanks to each and every one of you for again, once again, stepping up for your state and for your fellow veterans. Once again, serving. That's a word that you hear over and over again when we talk about our veterans and how devoted they are and committed to putting their time and energy to the public good and the good of your veteran colleagues and friends and neighbors. Each one of you are aware of the challenges 
that veterans face when they complete their service to our country. And because of your service, many face challenges to their physical and mental health and difficulty reassimilating into civilian life, like finding housing, like finding jobs that they can take pride in that pays their bills and helps support them. I know and I am proud that we have a governor, lieutenant governor, and secretary, and, and legislation, legislators who are working to tackling these issues head on and that your advice will be invaluable to all of us. We know that veterans are women and they face both the same difficulties and often at higher rates and at a younger age than their male counterparts, as well as facing unique challenges in a system that was, we know, originally designed for men which is why I am thrilled that the governor and secretary have assembled in this advisory group, a group of very strong women, four strong women. When we pass the $400 million bond authorization for the new soldiers' home, veterans' home in Holyoke, I called on the Commonwealth to rethink how we deliver services to and care to veterans of every generation, of every background across Massachusetts, ensuring that our veterans are connected to their communities is an important factor in ensuring to their physical and their mental health to make sure that both are taken care of. So I am proud of the steps we've taken to ensure geographic equity and accessibility, especially for our women and LGBTQ veterans, as well as our veterans of color. In this spirit, I am looking forward to seeing the incredible work that all of you do, and I hope you take a moment to truly enjoy this day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senate President. Um, we've also been joined by, by other supporters and, and, uh, and friends. We welcome the professional firefighters in Massachusetts. We thank you for what you do. Uh, Mass Coalition of Police is also in the house. Thank you for all that you do. We know a lot of people leave military service and go on to jobs as first responders. And this is a team and an administration that wants to support you all as well. Uh, Sheriff Nick Kochi is here. Mayor Nicholson from Gardner, thanks for making the trip. Other friends among us, friends of our veteran community. So now it is a huge honor for us to be able to swear in these wonderful folks. We thank them for their service. And again, I just really want to thank Secretary John Santiago, who has just hit it out of the park and brought such enthusiasm and such energy and such intentionality to doing something, you know, at a level we haven't done here before in the state. And I just really am grateful to you, John. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do it. Uh -huh. Solemnly swear and affirm. Solemnly swear and affirm. 
that I will faithfully and impartially that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me all, all the duties incumbent upon, upon me as a member of the Governor's Advisory Council on Veterans Services as a member of the Governor's Advisory Council on Veterans Services as a member of the Governor's Advisory Committee on Women Veterans as a member of the Governor's Advisory Committee on Women Veterans According to the best of my abilities and understanding, according to the best of my abilities and understanding, agreeably, agreeably, to the rules and regulations of the Constitution, to the rules and regulations of the Constitution, and the laws of this Commonwealth, and the laws of this Commonwealth. So help me God. So help me God. I, I, I do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Congratulations and thank you.